Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad and today I'm very honoured to speak with a very exciting project called Seller Network. And to do that we have the, the, the co-founder, his name is Mo Dong, he's also the CEO. Thank you very much Mo for being on the channel. Thank you Brad, thank you for taking the time. Not a problem. Now there's been a lot of buzz actually about Seller of the moment, so let's get stuck into trying to explore exactly what it's about. The best thing to start with obviously is understanding the credentials of the co-founder himself. So Mo, could you tell us a bit about your, your background, uh, your qualifications, and most importantly, why you feel like you are capable of leading this project? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, thanks for asking that. So. Uh, my background is, uh, you know, I, I, I graduated from uh, UIUC with a PhD in computer science. Mm -hmm. And my main research area is in the area of uh, distributed system networking and also game theory. And, uh, you know, my, my research is really along, the, all my research is uh, really along the line of combining all these threads. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my research work has been published uh, uh, on top venues for international conferences and is, is being also adopted by uh, major content, uh, content providers and service providers. I see. So my, my previous work is focusing on how to scale up or how to solve the scalability of the internet mm -hmm. and try to improve the uh, you know, speed of like a, a data transfer across like challenging network conditions and all that. And uh, uh, you know, another line of my work uh, is really about like formal verification of networks mm -hmm. and networking protocols, basically. So you, you you hear a lot of formal verification in blockchain because it's super important in blockchain space. Right. Uh, and people mostly talk about formal verification of the blockchain smart contracts. Right. Uh, but like uh, you know, in blockchain system, uh, as w especially in serial networks, there are a lot of things need to be formally defined and verified for this off-chain scaling platform. I see. And if you think about like what is a blockchain system in general. General, like any uh, any blockchain project, it it it, it really is uh, three components. One is a crypto uh, cryptographic uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. and the other is a, a system building and networking knowledge, and then the third is also very very cr critical, which is like the game theory knowledge, and uh, especially on the mechanism design and you know economic system design part. Right. Uh, so you know that's you know my my this is like why my background. Uh, you know, naturally lead me to start to learn and mm. study and research blockchain technologies. And so is this for all my founder, co-founders as well. Yes, and, uh, and, and Mo, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but we will go yeah. in and talk about all your co-founders and I'm going to explore yeah. with you in detail your team. But I really appreciate yeah. the detail you've gone into to explain your background and why you are qualified. Because essentially, we as a, a public want to know that you can do this. Um, and just to reiterate a few things more specifically, uh, you've read, you, you've been involved in research very specifically at uh, some leading universities around the world, particularly in the, Shang, the, the Shanghai Jiao Tong University. You very impressively have been involved in several publications, in fact, and been involved with uh, more than 50 companies, uh, including some Fortune 500 ones. So you have genuinely not just the, the theoretical knowledge and you have the research experience, but you also have the business savvy as well from having been involved in uh, real world applications of this research. So thank you for that you know, detailed um, explanation of, of what you've achieved so far, and congratulations for it. Um, if we could now talk about the slogans associated with Scylla Network. Um, it say, states that you are trying to bring the internet to scale to every blockchain. Um, yeah. What is interesting, and I thought this is the best way, segue into essentially understanding what you are, my understanding is you yourself are not necessarily a blockchain per se. So can we talk about, firstly, what you are, and what you stand for as a network. Yes, uh, definitely. So, uh, you know, I, I think this is like a really good question. And this is really good to like have the clarification up front. Mm -hmm. Now, Serum Network is not a separate blockchain. It's not uh, proposing another different blockchain with different consensus algorithms. Right. So what Serum Network is, is a coherent technology and economic architecture to enable internet scale uh, public blockchain through like off-chain scaling techniques, basically. Right. Okay. So. Uh, what we mean by off-chain is basically, you know, we are not specifically focusing on the consensus algorithm per se. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you have a lot of different consensus algorithms, uh, different blockchains floating around today, these days. You have like NEO, you have uh, Ethereum, you have EOS. They're all using different consensus That's algorithms. Right. 
and they're claiming different uh, different level of scalability. Yes. But reason that we uh, what we are and what we are trying to do, especially why we say like bring internet scale to every blockchain, is uh, you know we see that there is this fundamental limitation for any on-chain scaling solutions. Right. And that's why that we think that the only viable path and the, the only basically uh, possibility to bring mass adoption to blockchain to bring actually like you know uh, a lot of applications you, mm-hmm. you, you can like in the level of internet uh, to blockchain uh, is uh, going to have to go through the off-chain scaling uh, into blockchain is going to have to go through the off-chain scaling techniques and technologies. So that's why we think like Serenade Network is important because it's going to serve as an entry point for all the blockchain applications in the future. I see. And obviously one of the key words there you mentioned is architecture. And once again, we could, it harps back to some of the knowledge I have of ontology in the sense that obviously there are different premises in what you're trying to achieve. But again, that architecture being more than is going beyond blockchain. It's providing for... Uh, provisions for blockchains, in fact, so that off-chain solutions can happen. And that's essentially what you're trying to provide. And we're going to explore exactly how. Now, also, you explain some things uh, with regard to your claims that you are the most advanced state channel. You're the most sta- uh, advanced uh, state channel that's a full-stack solution. So in that respect, can you tell us a little bit more about the terms of state channel and how you can make that claim? Yes. Uh, so state channel is... Uh uh, the, the, the basis of state channel was proposed around 2015, mm-hmm. uh, and it was uh, proposed in a paper called Lightning Network. Okay. And you know, by now, a lot of people have, have already known like what Lightning Network is, and the initial version of state channel is proposed in the context of a payment channel. Mm-hmm. So basically, the idea is that let's say you and I are like basically uh, trying to frequently transfer money b- between each other. Uh, we don't need to have every each single uh, transaction to hit the blockchain and broadcast to everyone and reach consensus. What we can only need to do is we just kind of a two uh, two of us deposit into this uh, escrow contract, right? So in the in the initial lightning uh, you know paper, it's not like a called that, mm-hmm. but you can think of that as an escrow entity that you deposit both of our money to. Right. And after that, what happens is that, is that basically, you know, uh, when I'm transferring you money, I don't actually need to broadcast any transactions on the blockchain. Instead, I will just sign a proof saying that I agree among all the $20 you have, uh, we, we, we collectively put, uh, I have $9 now and you have $11. Now, what, what does it mean is that I effectively change the state of mm-hmm. that uh, channel from like we both have $10 to I have $9 and you have $11. And that's the, the initial premises of you know, state channel and I in see. the form of the channel. And then later it got evolved to uh, a more complex uh, term uh, basically saying that, okay, uh, you know, this payment or the balance per se is just a kind of state. Mm-hmm. And we can generalize that state to any sort of uh, uh, state you want. And for example, we can like basically mutually uh, change the states of a chess game, right? So right. we can basically signing the boards of who has with what pieces on which place, mm-hmm. and you know as long as we're passing this information, we're mutually agreeing on that each of us are moving the valid, uh, making the uh, making valid moves. I see. That uh, it means that you know uh, you know the state is transitioning in that chess game basically right. entirely. So now, it, sorry to interrupt, so, but in that in, in yeah. that respect, obviously the focus of now that you've built this uh, state channel system and this architecture is really one of the fundamentals is the payment uh, system itself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and the reason that we claim we're the most advanced full stack solution for that mm-hmm. is because this is like a, 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 a actually a very very complex system. Mm-hmm. So people like uh, you know uh, today people will refer uh, off-chain solutions as layer two, right? So basically, oh okay, this is a layer two solution, mm. uh, but the layer two is like a, a very confusing term. It feels like it's just a very thin layer and mm. it's just like the state channel and definition of that. It's not that case. So uh, the state channel layer or uh, not only state channel, but in general off-chain layer mm. uh, is actually a very, very rich layer that it's itself need to be defined into different like layers as a, uh, as a stack, like a layered architecture itself. So in that so, respect, I want to ask you, Mo, yeah. would you regard the off-chain component, given that you are creating this tiered system of a very complex modularized uh, design, is that akin to the on-chain in terms of being as important? Yes, I think I think it is as important as on-chain solutions, basically. Mm. 
Well, I appreciate yep. that. Let's now explore uh, something a little bit more deeply, and that's with regard to the pain points, Mo, because there's a lot of motivations, no doubt, behind building this, and we're alluding to some of them now. Let's explore them specifically. What were the problems that you noticed that were in, inbuilt in the, in the landscape, being blockchain and beyond, that, that really drove you to build this out with your team? Yeah, uh, so I, I think the reason that we, we, we this like a, the entire, uh, you know, uh, effort is, uh, you know, initiated by the fact that we realized that, you know, the value transfer or like a, any kind of contractual logic binding the value transfer need to match the speed of information transfer today. Right. right? So we have super fast information transfer today in Internet. We have like, a, you know, a terabytes and petabytes of data get delivered across Internet. Uh, per second, mm -hmm. but think about how the value transfer is like flowing through the network. It is still very, very slow and segregated in separate financial silos. Right, and that's why, like this, this is why it motivates us to build a you know a system that can run smart contracts that can execute blockchain logics to realize this kind of seamless and super fast and speed of light mm -hmm. value transfer across the global world. And uh, you know that's the uh, that's the motivation for us. Now one layer. Uh, lower than that is that we realize that you know to real uh, to achieve that kind of scalability to achieve that kind of scalability to match the internet scale mm -hmm. we actually need to you know look beyond just the changing of the consensus protocols right and we have to like uh, look into the off-chain solutions and uh, uh, you know basically find novel solutions and build architecture, build full stack solutions in that space to fill that empty and vacuum place. Okay, let's let's so, talk about that for a moment. So, do you think yeah. one of the problems, the pain points that you're addressing, is the fact there wasn't enough provision for the off-chain architectures themselves? In that the pre-existing ones just weren't cutting it, or they weren't doing the job that was required to match with the the influx we've seen of all these. Uh, public blockchains that are running on chain. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think that's a that's a fair statement. Or you know, turn it another way. This is a kind of a, a chicken and egg problem, right? Mm -hmm. So right. We, we don't we don't see a lot of uh, application built on the blockchain yet. It may be that because like uh, whenever people build some application, no one is using that. Right. Right. The, the one of the key reason that people are not using them is because the on-chain solutions are not scaling enough, uh, scaling fast enough. Right. Uh, that's like where uh, you know the the, uh, the off-chain solution need to be uh, put in right. to solve that scalability problem and with a very short uh, go-to-market time. Yeah. And, and Mo, do you think that you know obviously building out something of this nature? Do you think that it's going to be the fundamental solution, the fundamental component that really enfranchises the uh, this 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 technology to really have utility, to really build out into the real world? Yes. Yes. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, you know. I'm. I'm a, I'm a firm believer of that. Yes. Okay. Well, we appreciate that you are leading something like this. So let's explore a little bit further. Now, specifically with some of the pain points, there's references to side chains as well, and also payment channels. So can we talk about those in, 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 with respect to pain points once again, in that we've already seen the, the iterations happen of side chain designs and horizontal scaling? Yeah, so uh, I think I think there are like two aspects here, right? So one is what people commonly refer to as sidechain, mm -hmm. and uh, the other is people what, what people commonly refer to as sharding. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these days uh, uh, there are some confusions floating between them. Right. right? So they, they they looks very similar, and sometimes like they even have similar mechanisms saying that okay, for sharding, both, both sharding and sidechain, they're both like a depo uh, committing like block headers on the uh, on the root chain, uh, but they're also like f uh, quite different. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I would say like sidechain is more towards the direction of uh, a off-chain solution because uh, it has like a you know loose or uh, you know a less well-defined consensus uh, mechanism hold between them, mm -hmm. and it can basically use uh, arbitrary kind of a consensus and even just like a very very simple uh, proof state consensus. And also uh, you know uh, for sidechains there are uh, a lot of challenges and for sharding. Uh, in general, there are a lot of challenges. Like basically, um, you know, uh, the, the performance of the blockchain transaction will drop back to a very low uh, performance when we're doing like cross side chain or cross sharding solutions, mm -hmm. cross start uh, cross start transactions. Sorry, I see. And for for state channels, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, there aren't a lot of uh, pine, uh, you know, uh, cutting edge research uh, on this front, mm -hmm. and we're proposing something genuinely new. There that is. Uh, uh, you know, enabling not only just a single payment, 
Uh, so this is like a, one of the pain points of existing solutions that is mostly just a f focused on simple payment. Right. But we are also enabling uh, generalized state transitions that it, you can you know, do any kind of a contractual logic bind it to this generalized state channel, uh, like for example, playing chesses, uh, doing prediction market, uh, yes. making exchanges, and all that stuff that can be built in the scalable platform. I see. So Mo, obviously there's a lot involved in Seller. Can you tell us though, for those who perhaps don't know anything about uh, distributed and decentralized technology, for those particularly who don't understand architectures themselves in this uh, sort of state channel domain, could you tell us in a nutshell, what exactly is Seller Network? Yeah, so you know, if we really want to get to the nutshell, mm. I would just like to uh, use the example of the real world. Okay, right? great. So, Let's not talk about technology. Let's just uh, you know get down to the real world. Perfect. So in real world, like we have court, right? So and the court can do like basically uh, you know uh, judge judge things, judge like basically different cases. If you sue somebody, like the, the, you you both go to the court and do like the the transaction like through the law basically. Right. But most of the cases, let's say you and I are doing businesses. Mm -hmm. We just sign the contract. We mutually put our signature on it, and we we are, we, we are in agreement. And we'll just follow that contract uh, and you know we, we probably submit that contract somewhere uh let's say we submit the contract uh, somewhere to say that, okay we, we genuinely did both sign this sure and, you know we have as crow we have a witness that's fine and after that we're just doing business like uh, you know following that contract without actually going to the court every day right right and, so, and there's also been a lot of middlemen involved in that process as well to add to that yeah, 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 yeah. There are a lot of middlemen involved in the process to basically testify that we have genuine intent to establish the contract. Exactly. All the lawyers and all these stuff are for that. Exactly. But once that contract is established, all we need to do is we don't need to go back to all these people. We just do business. Right. Right. We we do transactions. You send me uh, goods and I send you payment. You send me goods. I send you payment. And you know we have supply chain and all this. Sure. This is like how economic works today. Right. Basic economics. And uh, you know. Uh, just putting an analogy here, going to court here, mm -hmm. that is uh, basically just an on-chain transaction, right? Okay. So on, on the chain, it's a blockchain transaction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doing this daily business, you know, uh, calling you, like uh, signing, uh, you know, new checks and stuff, those are off-chain transactions. Okay. The off-chain transactions are secured by the, by the fact that we have a mutually established rule. And whenever we're doing transaction within that, like, frame, framework of the rules, uh, we we're just basically mutually signing the state and doing stuff right now uh, What happens so this is this is secure. This is still perfectly secure uh, Because like whatever uh, 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 Whenever bad things happen because like say I, I escaped or you know uh, I'm just a bad guy and trying to like basically scam you out yep. of your money Yeah, then what happens is that you know We, we just basically go to the court finally right and you know, the court will judge our case based on the contract and based on all the evidence Mm -hmm. uh, or the most recent evidence in the in the case of the state channel uh, of like our 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 business relation. Sure. Right. So this is how real world works. And for 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 state channel, uh, the idea of off chain in general, not just only state channel, mm -hmm. is exactly that. It is uh, trying to bring most of the transactions from going to court every day mm -hmm. to establish some rules, and then you know we can just do uh, do business between ourselves. We don't I need see. to basically broadcast it to the network. And in this case, uh, the court or a third party is uh, you know, replaced by a smart contract that is decentralized and maintained mm -hmm. by the blockchain. Now, if we can go across to some of the, the reasons behind it in terms of why you fundamentally did choose to be an off-chain off scaling solution as opposed to the on-chain, in a nutshell, once again, why did you choose so, you know, so specifically on the off-chain? Well, the number one reason is that we have the vision that for any on-chain solutions, there is an upper limit for scalability. Right. The reason there is such upper limit is because you know, uh, for for any on-chain consensus algorithm, mm -hmm. it involves the distributed communication between multiple parties and they're agreeing on the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know, as long as you have like a lot of transactions, you know, let's say even like three machines need to be re agreeing on something, they need mm -hmm. to communicate between each other and they're agreeing on that. So if you have a lot of transactions, they get congested. That they need to have an inherent overhead mm -hmm. of these three machines. Yes. And you know, if you think about it in simple terms, the three machine when they are agreeing on the same thing just cannot be faster than just a single machine. It's very interesting you say that because also we talk about that in the context of nodes, and also we've heard many uh, discussions had about how 
uh, infinite scaling can be really, really productive. But in this sense, what you're articulating very clearly now is that there are limitations with on-chain simply because of the word consensus and, and all of the challenges it brings in trying to provide that agreement and also uh, with regard to uh, computationally even when transactions occur. So it is interesting that you say that off-chain, once again, having that singular approach in a modularized fashion, it, it, it can actually be much more productive. Yes, so for off-chain solutions, you know, uh, as long as it is transaction between defined parties, let's say basically transaction between you and me, we don't need to incur that consensus overhead. Right. Right. It's I just see. you and me, I sign, you sign, we're done. Got it. So you circumvent yeah. all of those overheads through this process. Now, if we could explore some of your... your the, the stack itself, as you call it, because obviously it's tiered. Um, you've designed what I've called the, the seller's C ecosystem in that there's many different Cs that we see. So you've got yep. the C stack, the C channel, and many others. Can you talk us through them? One by one, let's explore these fundamental core elements. Sure, sure. Uh, I will try to be uh, brief on this, uh, uh, you know, introduction, and you know, we can we can drill into details if we want. Basically, sure. that'd be great. So, uh, C stack is really this like layered architecture uh, that we want to define for any off-chain, uh, you know, uh, uh, operating network, and especially for seller, because uh, you know, a layered architecture has the benefit of like clearly separated. Uh, uh, layers and uh, you know they can independently log, evolve each of the layer okay. and you know uh, it enables the possibility for interoperate right so basically you can have like the channel layer uh, and you, we have the route uh, C route layer and the COS and finally the CF right. so for the channel layer uh, it is a, a gen, uh, it's it's a combination of a generalized state channel and side chain switch mm -hmm. uh, it enables people as the most fundamental component to build scalable applications. These are the components that defines what is the on-chain contract needed for enabling uh, you know, uh, off-chain solutions mm -hmm. and the communication protocols to update any sort of like uh, off-chain states right. uh, for, for this. And, uh, so it's essentially, that, essentially it's like a toolbox for developers to utilize to build out uh, applications. Not yet. It's not, it's not a box yet. Okay. So it hasn't reached the toolbox part yet. Right. And uh, you know this is like kind of like the the, the, the raw materials. I see. Right. So th these are the raw materials, and you know we haven't built two yet. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, what we have is uh, uh, C route. Okay. Right. So what C route is is uh, you know for every uh, generalized uh, state, uh, state channel uh, network, and uh, in fact like a connect interconnected side chains, there need to have. Uh, this capability to uh, route like uh, payment or conditional payment that is bind to a certain contract uh, through the network. Mm -hmm. right, so, but this routing problem is a, a very, very challenging problem because here we are not talking about uh, route data. It, we're not talking about like basically I send you a data packet. Mm -hmm. But what I'm talking about here is a, is a routing problem in a what people call overlay network. You can think of it as a network on top of a network. Right. Network on top of a network. And this overlay network is uh, consists of all the state channels opened between you know different peers in the decentralized world. Mm -hmm. And this routing problem is very very different from just like an internet data routing problem. And no, uh, in fact, no one has solved like a, how to build or what is the fundamental principle mm -hmm. to build a uh, you know optimized or appropriately optimal routing algorithm. And we propose a new principle to build. A probably um, you know state channel and a generalized state channel routing algorithm uh, based on our novel researches. I see. So obviously you're trying to solve that routing problem inside having the C route. Now you've also mentioned your previous one as well with uh, addressing some of the applications, but there's a big one as well, Mo, with regard to your C channel itself, and there's lots of complexities associated with it. Can you tell us a bit about C channel and what exactly are you trying to to solve here? Yeah, so C channel is uh, what I mentioned is just like a, a, a building blocks for uh, the upper layer application, mm -hmm. and it is a generalized state channel and side chain suite, right. and it's basically you know a bunch of things that you can use uh, as fundamental layer uh, to build like a, a kind of like basically the, the C apps, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, the C channels are uh, you know mostly consist of on chain contract mm -hmm. and off chain communication protocols to how to define and how to resolve the conditional dependency between them. So what we define in the same channel layer uh, is called a uh, you know, conditional dependency DAG of right. states. So right. the, you may see the, the word DAG in, in our website, 
But the DAG here is very different from the DAG what people commonly refer to as one kind of a consensus algorithm. Mm -hmm. This is a describing the state's dependency between you know, uh, all the opt-in applications. I see. So you really are doing a, a unique DAG design uh, as opposed to seeing one that is the fundamental layer or the fundamental core of blockchain um, projects we see coming forth now. And once again, you are an off-chain solution in that respect. So if we could also explore uh, the other elements as well, like you have the COS as well, the, the COS. What, what is that trying to achieve uh, in the, yeah. in, as an operating system? Yeah, so the reason we, we call the COS an operating system is because you know, with all these building blocks, how do you like assemble them together to some tool that people can use, right? right? So you have like a lot of building blocks lying on the ground and you want to build some application. Yes, you can use these building blocks, uh, you know, uh, again and again to build different applications, but you could also, we could also just uh, provide a bunch of uh, predefined tools for the developers mm -hmm. uh, to build like easily integratable uh, applications. Mm -hmm. So that is the first mission of COS. Mm -hmm. And that is like the first reason why it is called a COS. If you think about like uh, our uh, operating systems, like Mac, Windows, what are they? They are a platform so the developers can build all these cool applications for us. Right. Right. So this is like their first role. And then uh, the second part of COS is really a runtime system. What I mean by runtime is basically just like what people can use, what users can use mm -hmm. uh, for this, uh, you know, applications built on top of uh, this development framework. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's what, what we think of COS is a combined development framework and runtime system for opt-in enabled applications. Mm. To put it in very, very concretely, it's basically the stuff that people pull out from like the, uh, his, uh, his cell phone or her cell phone to click on the COS and he, uh, you know, uh, uh, the user can enter the opt-in word and mm. start to use my very, very scalable uh, you know, off-chain applications. I see. Now, obviously, Mo, I have to ask you this because what, as I talk through all these different layers, these different components, what I'm essentially uh, hearing from you is a very, very ambitious project, what you are standing for as a seller network, literally as a network itself. How confident are you, Mo, that you are able to achieve such a, ver such a vast uh, you know, plan, such, a, <coughs> such an ambitious one? Yeah, yeah. So I think I think there are several uh, uh, you know aspects of this. Mm. Uh, the one is that we need to uh, have a very very strong technology team, mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, the good thing is that you know all the four founders are having very deep technology background. Mm -hmm. So we have founders from you know uh, Berkeley, Princeton, MIT, uh, mm -hmm. all PhDs in fact, right. and they have been working in industry uh, for years, and we have deep connection to engineer world. And we are hiring really fast, and all the engineers on board are very, very top-notch engineers. I see. So, uh, first, of, first of all, from just an engineering capacity point of view, we can handle this. Right? Mm -hmm. So we handle this sort of things before, and we're going to handle this one as well. I see. And I, thank you for the answer. I, I only ask you this because often we see the projects, even in the off-chain solution, where they're focused on one aspect itself. But you, given all these core components that we're discussing now with your C stack, your C channel, your C route, uh, the, 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 the COS, I mean, there's so much involved here. Uh, that's why this has to be discussed now. Yes, you have a very uh, you know, experienced team with a lot of work experience and a lot of research behind them. But even then, you know, this is a really ambitious project. Yes, yes, it is, it is. And, and this is like a, another point that I want to bring uh, here as well, is that, yes, this is a super ambitious project, uh, and, but it, it does have an even faster go-to-market time than most of the uh, public, chain blog, uh, public blockchain uh, projects. Okay. The reason is that this project can be break down into pieces mm -hmm. to basically, you know, uh, gradually evolve to its full form. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for any public blockchain, if you think about it, this is like a, you need to have a, a consensus layer up front, mm -hmm. right? So uh, unless like you're kind of giving up on a consensus layer, just forking some like basically Ethereum or Bitcoin to begin right. with. Uh, but like for us, uh, we can actually deliver the benefit of the uh, uh, state channel, uh, you know, applications faster than, you know, uh, any on-chain, uh, you know, mo I wouldn't say any, but like mostly, uh, most on-chain solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's why we also want to have a very, very uh, well-defined go-to-market, uh, you know, strategy uh, for a to be used by real user mm. uh, really 
And I really appreciate that and thank you for also alluding to some of the traditional uh, uh, services and, and softwares and, and technologies we have because I want to talk to you about that now. Now, we, we, you've mentioned Microsoft as one example. Clearly that is a very important technology for today's uh, use case and for those who are engaging in a multitude of different uh, applications. How confident are you that you know, something like Microsoft is not going to do something like this? Or perhaps even given your position as an early entry, first entry in this space at the, to this degree, how confident that you can actually enter into the marketplace and stay for the long term? Yeah, so uh, that is a great question. And I think this applies to uh, every basically blockchain project. Uh, but the good news here is that the answer also uh, you know, applies to every blockchain project. That is, uh, you know, the, the fundamental business model for decentralized application is very different from, let's say, Microsoft and Google's model. It is. Uh, yes, they can send out a chain. But, you know, the, the, the key thing here is that all these things that we're building is enabling a different kind of application comparing to uh, Microsoft. Mm. It's just like uh, when they were, like, initially get built, their software model is very, very different from like the, the old guys like back then. So uh, it, it's sort of like entering the market from a certain point. And uh, that, that market entrance uh, is going to be like basically growing uh, from like a, you know, maybe a niche market. Mm -hmm. But then finally, it will start to like take over the use cases for some of the bigger uh, companies, mm. right? So we, we may uh, all the blockchain world may start from like a, a simple gaming, online auctions, some insurance, some prediction market, some decentralized exchanges, and then later you will find that okay, now like the financial markets is starting to be built on blockchain. ETFs are building on blockchain, right. and all this stuff are starting to migrate to blockchain. So this is how, in general, any kind of a decentralized ap uh, application or sorry, decentralized technology mm -hmm. uh, will start to attract the different applications. Uh, uh, and like expand uh, from I the world. So yeah. And in that respect, also Mo, you know, given that you are this architecture, that you are essentially industry agnostic. And in that respect, clearly you're set up to be something that could be not just global, but could inf uh, infiltrate and permeate through all industries across the globe. Yeah, I think uh, you know the, the, that's the premises of decentralized technology, and in, 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 for us in particular. Uh, we are kind of like the, uh, the, the uh, we, we would we, we would like to see ourselves uh, in this ecosystem as like the central component here that we're connecting all these applications on the top and you know at the same time because of our layered architecture that we mm -hmm. talked about yes. we can also become blockchain agnostic that we can basically uh, you know uh, uh, tap into different blockchains and different user bases and different use cases mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. enable the scalability uh, for uh, you know uh, just not only just the you know public blockchain but also uh, you know, uh, application. That's so a, that's our vision for opt-in solutions. That's yeah. a fantastic point. So let's explore that right now. So are you mm -hmm. currently talking to any pl public blockchains? Are there, is there any interest uh, in the blockchain domain? And also, are you talking to anyone in the mainstream traditional market uh, marketplace as well? Like as we've alluded to with Microsoft, is there are there inter inter interested parties that you can disclose to us now? Uh, so uh, I can tell you that you know uh, we are talking to uh, public blockchain uh, you know uh, projects. Mm -hmm. So s some of the existing projects, like uh, you know very big ones like Bitcoin and uh, you know Ethereum EOS, uh, they're relatively in the established phase. Right. Uh, so uh, it's it's very good because we don't necessarily need to like uh, you know talk to them so often. We just need to like innovate and build on on top of that because they have. Very very nice, especially Ethereum. I would say have a very very nice, like basically developer community and developer support. Mm -hmm. uh, and the community is also very friendly there, uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of, like a uh, uh, research and collaboration. Uh, you know, potentially uh, can happen. Right. Uh, and uh, but we're also looking into the uh, promising newly rising uh, blockchain uh, technologies, especially those with uh, uh, genuine technology innovations. Mm -hmm. Uh, at this point, uh, you know, we haven't disclosed our uh, partners, sure. uh, but I would say that the partner announcements are coming. So it sounds like, from what I'm hearing, is that there are some really exciting blockchains that are doing innovative things, led by, no doubt, leading professors or leading universities as well, and you're aware of them, and you're certainly looking ahead towards the future with some of these exciting projects to come. 
Yes, yes, I am. I'm, uh, you know, uh, we we are we are entirely complementary and you know basically orthogonal to this uh, to these approaches, mm -hmm. and we very much look forward to that. Okay, so take note, everybody. You heard it from Mo. There's 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 more to come in terms of partnerships ahead with those qualified, perhaps, to do something as equally uh, ambitious uh, as Solar Network itself. Now, if we could move across to discuss scalability itself, there's been a bit of criticism with regard to the need for you know, significant amounts of of scalability. So let's talk about that, you know, very simplistically. Let's get down and dirty with why do you need to have so much and why do you need to be so scalable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, before I answer that question, like uh, I want to ask the audience and also like everyone this question that, you know, uh, let's let's dial the clock back back for 10 years. Right. And uh, that was when, uh, you know, 3G just came out, basically. 3G cell phone uh, in internet just came out. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like a mind was uh, was blowing. My mind was blowing. This is like so fast. We, we're done for mobile internet, right? Right. We're actually just done for mobile internet because like <laughs> I actually see you know web pages on my phone now. Like right. I check, I can check email super fast without actually any delay. Uh, you know, a lot of us, including like including me, I was like a, you know just a uh, just finishing my like high school back then mm -hmm. um, was. Uh, Really like uh, impressed by this new technology innovation and saying, uh, thinking that okay, that's done. We don't need anything faster, mm -hmm. right? Look at us now. Right. Like starting from 2008, that is the dawn of actually mobile internet, mm -hmm. and that's what uh, how Facebook took the market and basically how it became one of the most popular, uh, popular, uh, you know, uh, social, social network platform. So you know, uh, there is always a need for speed for. Uh, for, 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 for scalability. Now, mm. let me talk a little bit more concretely. For blockchain itself, uh, you know, uh, this kind of a need is actually much more urgent. And it, it is much easier to justify also, right? Because uh, if you think about what is like economic activity, it is essentially the transfer of value mm -hmm. and the transfer of information. And the conversion between value and information through like human activities and efforts. Right. Right. So we have super fast information transfer backbone infrastructure now. We, we, we can basically achieve like speed of light information transfer. Um, you know, uh, as an example, I think I remember this correctly. If I remember this correctly, we are delivering about 53 terabyte of data across internet per second. Which is immense. Yeah, which is immense. Mm. And now let's think about like uh, uh, what blockchain can do. Let's assume that each uh, you know uh, each one kilobyte of data delivered is associated with one value transaction event, right? right? Let's just bring the blockchain to that level of like fast. Like basically, you're doing information transfer at the real time. You're also doing like value transfer. Right. That ends up ends up at, at fifty three billion transactions per second. Wow. Okay. So if if we're talking about like a ten kilobyte is five point three billion. If we're talking about like uh, you know a hundred kilobytes, uh, you know it, it's you know uh, five hundred thirty million transactions. Mm. So, so, so essentially, your argument is that really TPS is a requisite for if we want to get really clear. There's a huge need. There's a huge demand for this kind of scalability. Yes. There. There. I think. I think this kind of scalability is going to get us very long way. To you know, improve the efficiency of human evolution for mm. real. Like I'm, I'm, mm. I'm hundred percent serious on that. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, uh, one thing I want to clarify and just uh, you know, make sure that every uh, 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 you know it's, the idea gets through mm. that it's not to say that we're gonna bring all the internet application. We're not gonna bring in emails to like the blockchain, right? We're mm. not gonna do that. Right. Well, what I'm trying to say that uh, is that you know, uh, we can associate the value transfer with information transfer. Mm -hmm. And information transfer is transferring super fast. Mm -hmm. And if we can like make the value transfer match the, the speed of information transfer, we can achieve much more exciting things that we don't we, we cannot even imagine yet. I see, and that's making a really clear point that we don't have, I actually haven't had this discussion yet to date with any CEO in that you're really making it clear that that value transfer is the fundamental and that that can actually relate to uh, the, the current provisions we have of, of email itself, for example. And yes, you might not be bringing email in, but it means that this kind of value transfer makes those kinds of things more plausible and possible in new central, yeah, decentralized exactly. technologies. So it's really interesting you say that. If we could talk now about privacy and security. These two things are fundamental to everyone that's used, utilizing this kind of new technology. How are you going to ensure that happens with the seller network? 
Yes, so privacy and security is an eternal topic for any computer science systems. Right. Basically. Uh, now, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm glad that we are talking about it because, like, it means that we have solved the scalability. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, I think we've moved on from scalability, moving across now. So thank you for that yeah, interview. Yeah. For. I, mean, I mean, like, uh, for, for secure and private, private uh, for sellers specifically, uh, we, we, are, we have also put a lo lot of thought into this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, specifically for seller network, uh, you know, uh, let's start from the privacy side. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the privacy side, like basically, you know, uh, uh, so first of all, security and privacy fundamentally is like in conflict with efficiency. Okay. Let's get that part out of there. So if we want to enhance security and privacy to a very, very high level, we definitely will sacrifice efficiency. We'll sacrifice speed, we'll sacrifice we, transaction. We, we right? find that particularly on on-chain situations currently, especially so. Yes, and, and I think in general, even for off-chain solutions, it's the same thing. Okay. Let me just uh, give an example here, right? So for, for uh, you know, uh, let's say we're doing like kind of a state channel networks, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, uh, one sender is basically sending some conditional payments based on some other things across the uh, state channel network, mm -hmm. and uh, the problem about that is like basically everyone along the way who is relaying the, the conditional payment or contractual logic payment or, or, or just a simple payment mm -hmm. for him can see, okay, this is a sender and that is a receiver. I can know like you're doing this transaction. Today, these things are controlled by, uh, you know, uh, 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 banks. Mm -hmm. uh, but now like they're, they're, they're you know, for, for blockchains, uh, uh, they're they're controlled by these entities. Right. So uh, now this is not a problem for uh, this is not a problem caused by uh, you know basically opt-in solutions. I also want to highlight that. Mm. Right. So opt-in solutions actually helps that a lot mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know for for for, for on-chain solutions you already have very very clear knowledge of who is sending who money. Right. Very very clear. Right, so for off chains, you limit the stat of the pe uh, people knowing this transaction from all the network to the people that is re relaying the traffic or relaying the, the payment for you. I see. Right? So there's a, lot, there's a lot of anonymity in built in it because it's only those who are relaying the information that are relevant in that context. Yes, that okay. is correct. Right. And, 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 but still, that may not be enough because still someone is mm. seeing that information. Hmm. Right. So uh, what Siller is also proposing is this is like a, a also a, a general idea uh, that is uh, pulling uh, the analogy or basically pulling inspiration from Internet world. Uh, that is, uh, you know, we can enable uh, overlaid onion routing mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, on the state channels, basically. Right. So like basically, you know, uh, you can have a kind of a, a running routing, but not again, not routing on data packets. But routing on this kind of overlay network, that mm -hmm. is network built on top of network uh, uh, state channels, to basically you know uh, do this kind of uh, onion routing capability, uh, what people call a Tor network. Uh, this mm -hmm. idea of a Tor network can be used, can be applied to this kind of a payment network or state channel network to hide the identity of the pay, pay, payer and the payee. Right. So that's also one possible way to do it. So that, that's just two examples. So but there can be. I see. So currently, you're looking at you're exploring different ways in which you can build in more uh, security and privacy uh, into this architecture. So that's good to know that you are currently doing that. I wanted to ask you if we could just hop back to the transaction, the TPS, for a moment, because I did want to ask you this yep. directly. What is the number? Because we didn't get into that, and we like to explore that when we do the comparative analysis. Roughly, right now, what kind of TPS are we talking about? especially given that you've articulated the opposite of what we often talk about in, with other blockchains in that you are saying quite simply TPS does matter as opposed to many we hear where you know in the, in the more academic space we hear the argument perhaps it's not needed yet but you're saying yes we need to move, move and change our thinking so what's the number and the capability right now of Seller Network as you build and continue to develop? Yeah, so I think I think like you know this is like a standard question that people ask for every blockchain project. What yes. is your TPS? Right. Uh, but like I think I think this question you know for the off-chain solution need to be reframed a little bit. Okay. Right, because uh, you know for off-chain solution it is really you know mo as most of the transactions moved from on-chain to off-chain, the the traditional sense of TPS that is a uh, how far you know what is the what is the question behind the traditional question of like what is your TPS right. is really how fast is your consensus protocol? Right. How fast can all these guys agree on the same thing? 
Uh, but when we're talking about like uh, you know uh, uh, a cellular network or we're talking about off-chain solutions, uh, the TPS is uh, a, the TPS on-chain is a much less relevant term. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, you know if we have to talk about like basically TPS, then it is basically you know uh, a, a, a lot of like uh, you know uh, the more people you use the system, the mm -hmm. the more scalable it becomes. Okay, right, so, so, it's, so it's user so dependent. It's, it's user dependent. But the reason why I ask you is because mm -hmm. you mentioned before that the blockchain uh, applications, in the sense of you, you can be blockchain agnostic. So you can utilize yeah. those that are using consensus algorithms that determine their own speed. So then, with seller network, how does that translate in relation to you in, in being able to claim that you can be super fast? Yeah, yeah. The, the reason we can be super fast is because we don't rely on any consensus algorithm at all. Right. right? So what, what we are relying on is uh, you know we're relying on the fact that you, the how fast you know each individual machines are, mm -hmm. and then we can just generally like basically you know uh, multiply the number. So let me just throw a number out there. Okay. Uh, for example, like Google's uh, servers, one of uh, one Google server like basically or one like server. This is like a you know a number I heard. You know I, I don't have the exact reference uh, sure. on that, so don't like hold me to it. Uh, it handles tens of thousands of transactions, you know, even close to a hundred thousand transactions per second. Okay. Right. So that's just one server. Mm -hmm. Now this network is consists of uh, multiple servers that is all doing and relaying off-chain payments, mm -hmm. off-chain state transactions. These are entirely off-chain without actually needing to have everyone agreeing on the same thing. Right. So you know. Uh, uh, and so that like, so that number can be multiplied throughout as you know that those different. Uh, essentially node-like structures almost facilitate the transactions. That is correct. And another analogy I want to pull here is, uh, you know, uh, is this. This is like a, maybe a remotely related analogy, but like it kind of have the same feeling. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, you know, uh, when, when we're saying that, okay, uh, what is your download speed, right? Mm -hmm. So what is your like entire network download speed? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, like what is your like, a, a, let's say, you know, back in 1990s, uh, you have like a files, file site, right. uh, host files, yes. right? So, you know, people are downloading that and they're asking, okay, what's your site, site speed? You answer them like one megabit per second. Mm -hmm. uh, then it comes bit, bit torrent. Right. And bit torrent is like a, this kind of a more peer-to-peer a -peer streaming and it, it uh, peer to peer like file sharing. And the more users join the Bitcoin uh, network, uh, bit torrent network, the higher the bandwidth or the higher, um, you know, speed this entire bit torrent uh, yes. network carries. Yeah. This is like exact kind of the same feeling here that you know the TPS is about like that the single file server mm -hmm. and you know for seller and all off chain network is about basically building all this kind of a more user use and the higher bandwidth. So strength strength in numbers, you know, for want of a better phrase, is really what you stand by in terms of building out your TPS. Uh, yeah. Okay, so when you talk about, you know, when we, we've heard the term billions of trans TPS, you know, oh, yeah. that's entirely plausible at some point, no doubt, if, you know, this goes to scale. Yes, yes, I, I, think, I think, like, uh, we intentionally put uh, billions of transactions there mm. so people can ask us questions. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, how can you achieve, like, billions mm. of uh, transactions? Mm. And we have FAQ updates on our website about that. Mm. Uh, so that is exactly, you know, what we just talked about uh, is exactly why, you know, we think that is uh, uh, feasible and it's not like a basically a pipe dream. I see. And thank you for making that very clear. Now, yeah. if we could move across to uh, perhaps some of the key terms with regard to your POLC, which refers to your proof of liquidity commitment. These are important uh, aspects and also you have another one called liquidity backing auction. Now, these are very complex terms and I appreciate that you are an expert in this. Can you tell us? why they're important and what they're actually meant to do. Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, you know, uh, I, I think Sarah Network, so well, one thing I want to first uh, preface is uh, uh, POLC uh, and, uh, you know, uh, liquidity backing auction and all, the other, uh, the State Guardian Network, mm -hmm. they're all in the uh, Sarah Network's token model. Right. Okay, so uh, you, you see a lot of infrastructure level project and they're issuing tokens, they're like creating tokens but if you ask, okay, what, what is your token design? Like, what is your token, you know, wh wh how do people use your token, basically? Right. Well, the, the answer is uh, most, uh, many of them simply is, oh, okay, you can use this token to pay the services. Right. Very okay, pay some services. Yeah, yeah, basically. So, but uh, there are a lot of criticisms about that, right? Because, you know, as a medium of payment, 
you don't necessarily need to use a special token. You can use like any sort of like tokens. You can use any sort of Bitcoin. You can use uh, Ethereum. You can use all this stuff, and you can use stable coins, of course, right? So, uh, you know, Cedar Network came from a very very different view on this. That is, we're not trying to do a medium of payment token. We're trying to do a uh, true utility token. You know. People you refer to utility token as payment token, really, you can think of it as we are doing like utility token 2.0. Okay. Uh, that is uh, Interesting. Uh, doing, yeah, that is uh, that is actually integral to the protocol itself mm -hmm. and to the ecosystem itself. That we can, this ecosystem cannot function well, cannot function scalably without this uh, token, mechanism, token mechanism and the crypto economic constructs. Right, so clearly what you're doing is you are making it, from your standpoint anyway, from the Stellar Network and as the CEO, is a genuine utility. You're arguing that some of them perhaps aren't really you know, functioning as proper utilities. You're building out mechanisms with these complex uh, liquid, liquidity um, aspects to be built in from the, from the outset, to really be designed to, have, to be useful Yes, yes, that is absolutely right. And, and you know, uh, uh, I, I, first I would recommend you know everyone you know interested in our crypto economists to read our medium post. There is a very detailed medium post right up about like basically how the each of these three components do. Yes. Um, you know, uh, Brad, I don't know we have if we have time no. to go in that little bit. Well, or, perhaps we could do that or, in another time as an update, and we'll go through all of that as a separate discussion. But the main yeah. point is, with regard to it, is you are focused on that being a utility. So you've already answered the question of whether I was going to, I was going to ask you that, uh, whether it be, you know, given that there's a climate of security versus utility as a debate right now, but you have clearly articulated you are specifically utility and perhaps utility 2.0. Now, if we could go a little bit further with that and talk about, you mentioned it's related to the token, Tough topic. Um, this is with regard to tokenomics. This is a, this is about your token design, your distribution model, all of that stuff that everyone wants to know. How, what can you tell us about the tokenomics? What can you tell us about um, hard caps, plans, everything, lockups? So yeah, uh, so Brad, uh, thanks for asking that question, and you know, thank you for you know everyone that is listening to this talk, and we appreciate your help very much, and we appreciate the support very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so Cedar Network has been focusing on building technologies uh, uh, so far. And uh, you know uh, the exact uh, you know uh, uh, fundraising model and uh, uh, other uh, stuff hasn't been really determined yet. I see. Uh, so you know, we'll, but we'll keep the community updated, and you know, uh, you can find us on Telegram. We're pretty active, and uh, you know, uh, as long as we have some information, uh, and you know, we will also, of course, conduct this uh, uh, entire potential. Um, the sales in a very legal compliant way mm -hmm. and you know we'll announce the uh, information there. Okay, so clearly you are planning so on some sort of... That I can also pro provide more informative information mm -hmm. and you know really thanks uh, the community's support for that. Well we think we appreciate your transparency and your honest answer so obviously you are planning out some sort of uh, sales structure. Um, can, we, can we at least ask you are you planning to release some information soon? Yes, we'll release some information very soon. Okay, well thank you for that. Now if we could move across to your team, we discussed this earlier in, this, in the interview. Um, tell us a bit about the expertise of your team, not individually but more as a holistic uh, response. Why is your team qualified to do this and what are the skill sets? Yeah, so definitely. Uh, so if you think about like this entire architecture, right? So this entire architecture starts from uh, you know, the contract and the kind of a language layer move up to the routing layer, kind of a networking, how to solve the networking problem. And then you, you have like the COS, which is like more tied to the end user, a, a mobile OS, uh, mobile applications and how to port these mobile applications on top of them. And then finally, you have the application ecosystem to right. build. So this entire network has a very, very heavy academic and also industry background. Right. Uh, so, you know, we have people, uh, all the founders are from, uh, you know, uh, uh, got PhDs from uh, Berkeley, uh, Princeton, MIT, mm -hmm. and we have like more uh, engineers on board every week mm -hmm. uh, from the same level of institutions from MIT, from like Columbia, uh, you know, and uh, the important thing is that we are not just an academic team, we're not mm -hmm. like a, you know, uh, purely focusing on the research. Mm -hmm. uh, many of our team members have extensive industry experiences in building out uh, highly scalable networks. So some of them uh, built like a Google's, uh, uh, you know, w w had contributed a lot in Google's uh, global scalable backbone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, was a, the, the t a team lead or tech lead for 
you know, very, very uh, scalable, uh, you know, uh, mobile services uh, um, uh, like Project Fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them uh, also build like data, uh, data center, uh, hyperscale data center networking infrastructures. Mm -hmm. And some of them focus on very much on, you know, the online learning algorithm and the routing problems in a diversity environment, which I is see. very much like, you know, today's decentralized world. Right. So, and, yeah, so clearly, clearly the expertise is far reaching. It's not just solely on, as you mentioned before, the engineering, and it's not just the academics trying to do this. We often see, well, I've often read white papers where it's just a very few number of experts and then, you, you know, they plan to build it out. But you've already got uh, a very, for want of a better word, a very robust team that, with, that are focused on different um, skill sets to provide it. But I did want to ask you this. How are you, do you also have, have you factored in the, I guess, the crypto element or, and I generally mean crypto rather than blockchain, in that the social structures of crypto are unique in, by design. Their social climate is unique. So have you also inbuilt into your team those that are aware of exactly how to gear, uh, you know, your, your sales structures in that, in, in, in that direction? Yeah, so uh, I myself has been following you know crypto space for quite a while, and mm -hmm. so uh, so as all of uh, you know our founders, uh, mm -hmm. uh, co-founders as well. Uh, so you know, uh, I I think I have uh, I, I follow the market pretty closely, mm -hmm. and I have pretty uh, a clear feeling about like basically uh, you know how things are structured these, these days. Okay, and also have a pretty strong marketing team. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know uh, who you know we, we love community and we, we want community to support us and especially the developer community to mm -hmm. to help us build. Right. And well, know, I, appreciate, I, I appreciate that, but the question I'm really making is: Is mm -hmm. there someone in your team, including yourself, who has the the savvy, the the, the knowledge, that, and, and of the dynamics that is you know quite unique to the crypto space? Because obviously we see many we've seen many projects in the past whereby there hasn't been someone perhaps in the team is really been being able to, to understand the fundamentals of that dynamic and therefore lost in that process because they've been so wholly and solely focused on the academics. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think we are like uh, you know uh, the, the people talk uh, you know uh, the, the more you guys talk to me, the more you re realize that like, I'm I'm, all, I'm a purist, but I'm also a very pr practical guy. Right. Uh, so you're so a you know, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I have a pretty good understanding on that. Right, well, thank you for explaining that as well. We appreciate it. If we could move now to something that we haven't been able to see because there is no white paper yet, uh, currently oh, yeah. um, published. But the roadmap itself, uh, tell us a bit about some of the plans that you and your team know that we can expect to see. Yeah, let me, let me just tell you, uh, so regarding the, regarding the white papers, mm -hmm. uh, we're releasing the white paper uh, this week. Okay, well, that's exciting. Oh, it is, it I am looking coming. forward to reading that. Yeah, thank you. Like we we are we are just uh, you know doing some final polishes. We had a uh, white paper uh, draft for a long time. Mm -hmm. The the reason that we didn't immediately release that is because we we we, we wanted to like have a bite sized white paper release. Like basically, you can think of we have posted five blogs in very short period of time, yes. and you know each of the blogs has uh, you know very very technical content in it. And yes. if you can see the most recent one, it is like actually our. Uh, generalized state channel section mm -hmm. that is embedded in the medium post. You can see like our uh, mathematical definition on that and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we, we want what we what what was our strategy is that we want to adequate the community about the importance of opt-in. That's why we're kind of gradually releasing it mm -hmm. and keep everything fresh and you know just kind of gradually lead everyone to realize the importance and the significance of opt-in scaling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I, I really, I really appreciate Mo that a bite-sized yeah. approach. I actually, I'm a very good colleague to someone known in the space as Bite Size Capital, and he certainly would appreciate this also. In that, <laughs> give, providing chunks of information is actually perhaps a great strategy because many people get overwhelmed by white papers, and of yeah. course, we're excited to read it. But we uh -huh. also appreciate the approach you're taking, and hopefully, will continue to uh, take as you, uh, you know, provide more updates of information about what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like uh, you know, but but you know, at the same time, we hear the feedback from the community, mm. we hear the ask from the community, and we respond. 
right. and you know, will basically you know publish the white paper. But I will still you know keep writing the explainer blogs and you know uh, keep doing explainer videos as well. Right. Yeah, and on that note, I did want to mention that too because Mo does have a seller network uh, YouTube channel, and it is exciting to see that there is that kind of degree of engagement for the people right from the very top of the company. And I genuinely mean that because you don't see that with every single uh, like a blockchain project, and particularly led by the executives. Uh, and I actually went on that today myself to become more educated from, from seller videos. So Mo, let's talk though about the roadmap and what's planned uh, for 2018 that we don't know. What's some key milestones that you want to hit uh, as you build out? What's the plan? Yeah, so uh, we will have a very detailed milestone roadmap uh, associated with our release of the white paper this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me just uh, you know give you uh, our like uh, uh, key plan for 2018. Is that by the end of 2018, we want to have we want to like try to achieve the goal uh, of like actually bring benefit to the blockchain space by enabling people to actually start to use uh, off-chain based uh, you know you know uh, applications in a very very scalable way. Right. So you know we're uh, this is like the, the go-to market is the, the thing that we strive to achieve basically. Okay. So applicability in the real world is what you want to achieve. Can I ask you as well? I mean, this reference to one of your uh, one of your, your layers or one of your stacks as for a DAP facility or the C app, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, are there yep. any plans in the pipeline for actual real uh, C apps to come on board, to onboard onto the system, the architectures? Uh, so uh, I think, you know, just like, uh, you know, er early days when, you know, uh, let's say iPhone released like a, mm -hmm. a Mac, uh, you know, a iOS system, you can have a lot of like basically pre-installed applications. Sure. So the application will came from us uh, in the beginning there will be some gaming, there will be some like, uh, you know, prediction market style stuff, there will be some auction uh, uh, related stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we also have a very large uh, developer community because I myself has been teaching, uh, you know, full stack uh, Solidity programming course on Ethereum, uh, based on Ethereum. Okay. And, uh, you know, I have about 300 students graduated already and they're all very eager to learn about auction uh, uh, scalability platforms, how to develop on that. I see. Uh, so uh, we are pretty confident that we will have a very, very good seed uh, for the core developer community uh, to build out and start to build more applications on Seller. Right, so you're fostering right from the, from the outset, developing a core skills for developers. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Now, if we could talk about uh, your competitors as well, Mo, with regard to, you know, for want of a better word again, because perhaps you don't perceive it as competitors, but certainly in the research, I've looked at Zillica, I've looked at Trinity. These, both these are focused on, you know, different approaches to off-chain solutions. Can we talk through that for a moment? Because from all the things you're saying, I'm hearing that you think that you are the best of all of them. <laughs> uh, well, so, you know, I do think I am the best uh, of all of them, but, you know, the market and time will tell who wins the game, right? Okay. So, uh, another another thing I want to bring is that this, this so the first thing is that this is like not a PvP game, it's a PvE game, right? right? So, uh, it's it's us versus the scalability monster. This is like a, 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 friend, uh, a friend's word. Uh, that I uh, this is not from me myself, but like I'm quoting quoting from a friend. Right. Uh, so can you, can you can you tell us what you mean by PBA game? Ah, uh, yeah. So basically, it's 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 not like uh, you know each scalability uh, thing is uh, each scalability comp uh, solution is competing with each other directly mm -hmm. because we need to build the market first. We need to actually enable the market to be large enough that you know any of us can actually like thrive and you know become the central one of the central players mm -hmm. uh, maybe. So that's that's my point that you know the scalability like the, there is a big monster of scalability and you know well uh, we don't need to and we don't have the time to fight against each other saying bad things about each other mm -hmm. so that's that's my high level view basically okay. now getting down to the differences let's say let's say, let's call uh, you know uh, uh, yes there are concurrent research and project building on that space mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you know on the technology side. We are uh, first of all more more focused on the blockchain agnostic. Uh, I know Trinity started with uh, uh, binding with Neo, uh, but they are Thank also uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know whether there are any recent moves or not. Mm -hmm. And also uh, you know uh, we are very much the f uh, we we have published innovative researches on how to construct generalized state channels mm -hmm. applications. Um, but you know I think their implementation and their white paper still. Uh, didn't talk about any of that. Right. Uh, 
and also uh, on top of that, uh, we have this uh, C route algorithm that is like a, we have the stack uh, layer based layer based uh, based approach, and we have the C uh, C route which is uh, the provably optimal routing algorithms, mm -hmm. and then finally we have the uh, you know COS. But I think on the technology stack, it really is. Uh, who can deliver the best technology in the fastest pace? I see. Uh, it's it's about idea. It's about ideas. It about it is about like you know uh, you know uh, uh, researchers, mm -hmm. and we're leading that. I believe we're definitely hundred percent leading that. Right. Uh, but oh. and on top of that, we are very confident in delivering that. In a very very fast pace. Sure. Well, let's talk about now. You know, again, let's get really direct with regard to sharding versus the the side chains, as you mentioned before. Now, Zilliqa has some serious sharding technology. They are wanting to do that off chain, as you know. So, with regard to your position uh, and your viewpoint on side chains, I want to talk about Zilliqa because Zilliqa is one that was a very very successful ICO and continues to be one that you know is very much uh, discussed in the crypto space. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, I think uh, you know just before before we talk about Zilliqa, let me just add one point for the for the previous question as well. Uh, that is that uh, we want to stress very much that our token model is the first of its kind. It is a very very novel, like uh, basically crypto economic design mm -hmm. that is different from all existing layer two solutions. Okay. So for example, uh, Trinity's uh, solution uh, for the for the token is just also just a medium of payment. Mm -hmm. But our token model is to incentivize the, the scarce liquidity and also ensure the security and availability of state for the system, for the opt-in uh, system. Okay, so that's, so, a, that's a key uh, distinction. That's a major distinction between that and Trinity. Let's, yeah. let's go across now to Zilliqa. Is that the same case for Zilliqa in that you are employing oh. this kind of sophisticated token design? Yeah, so for, Zilli for Zilliqa, Zilliqa is doing a, uh, I would say Zilliqa is doing a, uh, you know, uh, side chains or doing sharding for, uh, to be to be precise. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, and issuing uh, and also comes along with like a consensus layer. Right. Right. Okay. So, now, which is something uh, that you're certainly not doing because you're again the consensus confines and limits as we talked about the real scalability. So, in that respect, if they're doing that, I want to talk to you about the sharding because. Is it fair to say, you know, yes or no, that sharding is a less sophisticated system of a complex side chain that you've, you're employing? So I, I, I wouldn't put this uh, put it that way. And I think, like, really, uh, what happens is that Zilliqa is, uh, you know, uh, very, very much com complement complementary to us. Okay. Right. So uh, our underlying technology focuses more, uh, you know, e especially initially, we focus more on the generalized state channel side. Mm -hmm. And if you think about like basically they call sharding or side chains. Uh, these side chains and sharding shards need to communicate between each other, mm -hmm. right? So how do how do they like send transaction across shard? Yes, they can basically withdraw it uh, from the shard, put it on the uh, on the root chain, and wait for the finality timeout and move it to somewhere else. Right. But you know, uh, uh, for for, for for us, what we can do is that we can build state channels to uh, to connect these shards together. We can basically do a, a, a kind of a mini cross chain capability. Interesting. Like so, yeah. so technically, is it possible for Zilliqa and for Zilla, the Seller Network to work together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely possible, and and we are working together with some uh, you know uh, sharding based uh, uh, public blockchain. Mm -hmm solutions uh, as our partners so you will see like basically uh, you know a uh, partnership announcement coming up soon yeah that's very interesting we're looking forward to that now if we could talk across the uh, landscape itself about criticisms I've noticed online and in telegram there's all, there, there are always criticisms that are constructive let's talk about them with regard to those you're aware of is there anything that you've heard of or your team that you would regard as a constructive criticism you want to address yeah, I think I think the, the one of the criticism we sort of already talked about is uh, uh, okay, uh, you know uh, how uh, you know why do you need like mm. even if you can, mm. uh, why do we need this billions of transactions? Yeah, exactly. yeah, and I think that's a fair right. question because we hear so many claims. We've heard uh, Lehman Bear get on stage for Hashgraph and say one million transactions, and it was a very excited presentation. So I can understand why people you know are asking that because we hear it time and time again. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so you were asking. Uh, yeah. So I'm just making the statement that you know I'm supporting the you know your statement about the audience. Uh, you know, implying as you did that the majority of people around the world of, who are familiar with crypto are, to be fair, 
getting sick of some of the responses of statements being made of we can do a million or we can do a billion. So the key point I'm making here is Again, you're a pragmatist. Again, you're also explicating your position. That's what we're looking for because we are sometimes not getting qualified reasoning behind why there needs to be this kind of degree of scalability. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I, I completely agree. And you know, this is like a, you know, we should look into the future instead of uh, uh, focusing on, on right now basically. Mm. Right. Yeah. And, and once again, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, what you've said in the past in this discussion, uh, which has been really interesting, I'll have to say, is that you made a point that the TPS itself, given the value, of the transfer of value as, as well, coupling those together is the reason why the TPS needs to be so uh, of such super scaling capacity, because in the yeah, reality, need- that's going to need be required in the real world. Yes, the, the ideal case is to have the value transfer match the speed of information transfer. Got it. And that can enable a lot of the new use cases that we, 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 we couldn't even imagine right now. Got it. All right, well, thank you yeah. for that. Now, obviously, Mo, there's been a lot we talked about. You've explained so much, so many facets of Seller Network. Is there anything you wanted to say as a final statement in this interview that perhaps, you know, is one per area of the Seller Network that you're passionate about? Uh, so I, I'm really passionate that you know uh, we are we are working in this kind of a, a relatively empty space mm-hmm. of like truly bringing internet scale to blockchains, mm-hmm. right? So and you know uh, if any of you guys are watching and you know engineers, uh, we always welcome uh, talented engineers to join us. Mm-hmm. So sorry about sorry sorry about that, Brad. About like the the quick right. HR advertisement. <laughs> yeah, uh, so no please follow us like uh, on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, and you know, uh, I personally also manage a Twitter account. Uh, okay. So if you have any question about like similar network, edit either technology or any other things, uh, just uh, tweet us, and I, I check tw- uh, Twitter pretty frequently for that. Okay, so obviously Telegram and Twitter are available for the seller network managed by the CEO, CEO himself. That's quite rare. Now, obviously, with regard to up, upcoming uh, information that's going to be disclosed this week and, and beyond, and also your MVP. My understanding is there there is a demo available for those who want to know more. Yes, there's a MVP in, uh, embedded on our Medium post, and also we have a. YouTube channel, we were posting more videos about like a, uh, more uh, exciting applications, uh, uh, you know, continuously. Fantastic. And also, just gen- just generally with regard to your code, I wanted to ask you this before we finish, is that how, it, what's the state of code, the code itself uh, and your GitHub? Yeah, we'll release the code in a, uh, in, in a component by component way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to release the uh, underlying contract that defines the general state channel uh, this week. Okay, that's very exciting. So we'll look forward to some of the reviews, no doubt, of, of the code experts out there. Um, so on behalf of everyone, Mo Dong, you are a, not only a doctor, but you are the, the leader of this very exciting network. We wish you all the very best as you build out this very ambitious plan of yours. You are led, you're leading a team of PhD uh, experts in many different fields, and you're essentially trying to do something off-chain that really hasn't been done to this scale, no pun intended. So thank you very much for everything that you've explained today, and we look forward to learning more about the Seller Network. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.